So I got messages from friends, families, and even some of my clients asking me my take on a voice note that has already gone viral, telling people what to eat based on their blood group. I'd like to thank those of you who sent me the message asking for my opinion. I appreciate that you consider me as someone with authority to respond to nutrition matters. And for those who don't know me, let me introduce myself first. My name is Michelle Umeadi. I am a registered dietitian with over 13 years experience practicing in the public and private sector. I am an international member of British Dietetic Association. I have a certificate in diabetes care from the University of Warwick, London. I have certificate in exercise prescription for the prevention and treatment of disease from Trinity College, Dublin. And for the purpose of my response to the voice notes, I have a certificate in nutrigenomics for professionals of nutrition from Nutrigenomics Institute in Spain. So why is blood group a factor that can affect one's health? In the year 1900, scientists and doctors discovered that whenever there was a mismatch during blood transfusion, like a blood group A, getting blood from a blood group B, it led to complications and even death. So Carl Leinsteiner, a medical doctor and a scientist, was the first person who discovered that and classified blood groups into A, B, O. And a year after, blood group AB was discovered. So whenever there is need for blood transfusion, Blood group A can get blood from blood group A and from blood group O, considered universal donors. So you see why it's important? Because whenever there is a mismatch, it's going to lead to a problem. Now, the question is, why do we have different blood groups? There are many theories. There is still no scientific proof to explain that. It's still a mystery. It's still a mystery till date. But there is this particular theory, which is the reason why some people come up to say eating should be based on that particular theory. And since it's a theory, why should we believe it? Why should we eat based on something that has no scientific proof, no scientific evidence? And we share that theory with you. And like I said, it's a theory. It's, there is no fact. There is no information to support. And I will also attach, I will also attach the article that supports that this is a theory, not a fact. Now, the theory about the evolution of blood group. So I can respond to the voice notes. If you have not heard it, well, it's a voice note of a presenter that is uh, telling people that you should eat based on your blood group. If your blood group O, you should eat this and not that. If your blood group B, eat this and not that. Let me give you some of the points before I respond. Now, the presenter said that those with blood group O should eat meat and should not eat too much iron. Meat are the richest sources of iron. So I really don't know how one can eat meat and not obtain iron from it. Secondly, the presenter said that those with blood group B should not eat beans that had research and that research was carried out by visiting a renal center and then asking people their blood groups. And she discovered that 75% of people with renal conditions are all blood group B. This is not a scientific research. There is no scientific evidence to support that, please. Now, I can't go on to dispute all the presenters' points, but I would like you to understand blood group and why people think they should eat based on that. Blood group O, these are the first people that existed. That is the first blood group that existed. These people were considered hunters, our forefathers, it started with blood group O. That is why they are considered donors because majority of people are blood group O. 
they ate a lot of meat meat was the basic meat they were hunters and so they hunt meat they eat meat sometimes even raw and so most people existing during that time all had blood group o but then there was a transition people now started farming we moved from becoming from being hunters to being farmers started farming and planting and so we started eating plants fruits vegetables legumes etc so there was a need for a mutation a mutation is a change in the gene to be able to accommodate something new and so since we no longer eating meat we're not eating plants the gene has to be able to do something to be so that the body can digest the meat and absorb the nutrients and so there was a change which scientists call mutation and let me tell you that sometimes that mutation can actually be bad and sometimes the mutation can be good so for your body for their bodies let me talk about them for their bodies to be able to digest plants and uh, absorb the nutrients the gene changed and so gave rise to another blood group called blood group a now my question is in the process of that mutation the process of the change did the blood group a people lose all the benefits did they lose all the abilities that blood group o used to have absolutely not and so they could eat the plants and yes they were still eating meat and nothing is wrong with that when mutation is bad is if it begins to damage the cells if it starts damaging the body then yes it's now a bad mutation which is a disease called cancer sometimes mutation can be good for instance in the aspect of the blood group changing from o to a so that the body can digest and use plants that is a good mutation that is what happened it's not a bad thing it's not a bad change it's not a limitation and so blood group o we now started having blood group a then there was another transition yes not just blood group o we now have blood group a people who were eating meat and started eating plants then human beings started rearing animals at home and started milking started milking and drinking milk started eating things like cheese like eggs then another mutation occurred which gave rise to another blood group b so that the system can digest what milk and cheese and eggs and so that mutation gave rise to blood group b that does not also mean that people who are blood group b because of the change because of the mutation in the system in the cells can no longer eat meat or cannot eat plants no it's a mutation it's a change it's an advancement to accommodate something new not necessary to give up or lose all the other benefits or abilities so blood group b people came as a result of animal or husbandry where we are rearing animals at home we started learning to milk cows to make cheese to eat eggs to take yogurt and so there is a change as an advancement there is a progress you, you you didn't lose all the things that you can eat because you are blood group a or because your blood group b and then there is also another mutation which is the most recent and that is the blood group ab fish farming seafoods and that gave rise to blood group ab so the question is does this mutation mean that you have lost all the other qualities no absolutely not it's individualized so if as a blood group o you eat meat and it settles well in your system please go ahead and eat but if as blood group o you notice that when you eat meat you don't feel all right you don't feel good it does not digest then you stop blood group a you can eat meat if there's nothing wrong blood group a b you can take meat you can eat beans you can eat everything depends on you so let me tell you we have advanced we are not in that level of nutrition anymore where we tell people to eat based on their but it never existed 
it never there's no scientific evidence to support the claim just based on assumption if you really want to eat then we should be talking about nutri genetics which is eating for your genes eating for your genetic makeover yes that is the main thing now let me explain nutri genetics if you really want to eat based on your genes then you need to carry out what we, what we call genetic testing now when the result is out it tells you exactly what you should be eating and what you should not eat this genetic test costs between 200 and 300,000 naira should everybody embark on this to know what to eat and what not to eat no no that is not the case. There is really no need for that. And I'll tell you why. Remember I said that I have a certificate in nutrigenomics. And so during the course, we were made to understand that there is absolutely no need for everyone to go testing their genes. Why? Because 80% of individuals, 80% of the population are normal responders to healthy eating. Yes, 80%. So the question you should be asking is, how can I eat healthy? What is healthy? Because it's not the same for everybody. For someone who does not have a family history of diabetes, who doesn't have a family history of cancer, who just needs to eat healthy meals, then yes, the general guideline applies here. Eat a lot of um, fruits and vegetables, exercise, take fluids, avoid canned foods, and just general guidelines will work. That is healthy for the person. But healthy is a relative term. It's different for different people and different conditions. For for someone who has diabetes, for instance, healthy for him or her is eating a diet that has a moderate amount of carbohydrates, usually between 135 to 240 grams of carbohydrates. That is healthy for him or her. Eating more than that is no longer healthy. For someone who has a kidney condition, a healthy meal for him or her is a diet that is moderate in protein between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 gram per kg body weight. So that is eating healthy. For someone who is underweight and needs to put on weight, the person's healthy food will be a diet with protein intake of 1.5 gram per kg body weight. So that is what we should be concerned about. Are you even eating healthy? If you're eating healthy and it's not working, then that is when we should be considering nutrigenetics. Yes, because chances are you are among the 80% who will respond to a healthy diet. But if you are not, then there's reason for you to go for a genetic test. Let's say that you are following the plan. The dietitian has already planned the diet, so you're supposed and is expecting a certain result. You're combining it with uh, your medication and exercise, and the result is not going well. Then we have a reason to check. Perhaps you are among the twenty percent who are not responding in the expected way then we can say go for a genetic test and the result comes out and it tells us exactly the foods to plan the diet with and the foods to take out from your meal and then you start to see the results so i like you to know i hope i have convinced you that eating for your blood group is not valid it's not scientific eating for your genes yes but first learn what is healthy for you and eat before i go i like to respond to some other points that the presenter made number one the presenter said that blood group o should eat meat and not foods rich in iron food rich in iron meat it's a, we call we consider meats as foods that are rich in iron so there is no balance in that statement is there, there's a lot of confusion there the presenter also said that plantain is a healthy food but i also want you to know that sorry the presenter said that plantain 
is um, she insinuated that the plantain is rich in iron. No, plantain is not rich in iron. Plantain is a healthy food. It's good for everybody, but it's not rich in iron. I don't know if it's because of the back that is green, and a lot of people think that, oh, okay, that means that the plantain is also rich in iron. No, it's not. The unripe plantain, when you open it up, it's not green. So it's not rich in iron, even though it's a healthy food. The presenter also mentioned that aflatoxin is not found in it. Aflatoxin is found in nuts. No, aflatoxin is not found in nuts. Aflatoxin is found in bad nuts and even bad greens like rice. Allergies in children and adults respond to diet modification, whereby allergenic foods like cow milk, nuts, corn, and even gluten in wheat are removed, not necessarily because of the blood group then I agree with the point the presenter made about consuming too much canned foods. That is what she referred to as concon. Yes, I totally agree with her on that. We should go natural as much as we can. So, thank you for listening. I'd like you to be my friend on Facebook and on Instagram. You can find me there as Dietitian Michelle. And if you have a diet-related condition like diabetes or cancer or kidney condition, you're overweight, you're obese or underweight, and you really want a nutrition therapy, I am a registered dietitian. That is my area of expertise. I'll give out my official lines. 0708 Nine eight seven three four nine seven zero seven zero eight nine eight seven three four nine seven and zero nine zero four six seven five eight zero seven nine zero nine zero four six seven five eight zero seven nine. Thank you for listening. I am Dietitian Michelle.